What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Madhouse. I'm your host, Anthony, from the Knights of Horror, and I'm back with Eddie from Eddie Tainment for another West versus East Coast. Let's do this. <laughs> from within. Face Poltergeist, Halloween 4, and Stranger Things at Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. All right, so we're talking today about shared properties, uh, our non-shared properties, and just all, all, all around thoughts to the event. Everything's announced. So let's get down to it with our shared properties. Yeah, so and so long story short, the event is completely announced. We know exactly what we're getting. Um, obviously, we have two different events, but with a lot of similarities. So starting off with our shared properties, we have five shared properties. Uh, one which isn't completely shared, but we'll get to that at towards the end uh, but first and foremost we have stranger things uh, we have halloween 4 we have trick-or-treat poltergeist and the last one that is like shared but not shared which is the blumhouse uh oh, productions uh Horse the blumhouse chapter two yes sir are, are they actually calling it chapter two uh on uh, well, at least on the on the horror nights hollywood website they're calling it chapter two i don't know if they're doing it for orlando um so I'm very curious to see how how it's going to be different from. I mean, I already know there's going to be different stuff in the Orlando and the Hollywood, but the R's they're calling it Chapter Two. Gotcha. All right, so we'll get to that one. That'll be a good transition. But let's start off with Stranger Things. And what do you think about it? I am super excited for Stranger Things season one. Uh, it's going to be. I, I think it's going to be really good. Uh, we're having ours in a sound sound stage, so that's awesome. And that gives the availability to have the creators play with environments, play with um, like weather and stuff like that. Especially, I've always thought of the of the upside down being like a cold place and stuff like that. So going in the upside down transition, it can be awesome that we they have like the AC full blast or something like that, where it's like super cold in there. Um, I'm very excited to see the uh, costume and makeup for the Demogorgon. That should be awesome. I want to see how they're going to incorporate the kids in the maze, if they're going to incorporate the kids in the maze. And a lot of the infamous scenes from season one should be awesome. Yeah. Do you actually watch? Yeah, I, I've watched both seasons, and I, uh, I'm i a huge fan of Stranger Things. And I when I when I found out this was announced, I was just I – was, I was really excited. I mean, I'm, I'm, I love the whole 80s theme of the show. And if they can incorporate a lot of that into the maze, which John Murdy said he was a fan of, that should be awesome. Um, one of the things that I'm really hoping to hear in the maze is the song "Should I Stay or Should I Go." That was a major part of season one, and uh, so I'm I'm hoping we see, like I said, not only that, but a lot of the infamous scenes from season one. Yeah. So my thoughts on Stranger Things. I actually am not a huge fan. I had watched the the first season and kind of I think I watched like two episodes after that from the second season and stopped. Had no reason to continue up till it was announced. The one thing that I can say about this this announcement was 
by far, I hope you agree with me, it was the best trailer for any of the houses announced this year. What do you think? Oh yeah, that? when when that trailer came out, I was losing losing my my uh, losing my stuff, man, because. Uh, it's the transition. Well, for one, it, it has the iconic uh, score, the theme song, which everybody knows by now. And the fact that it transitioned from Universal Studios, all you see is the bike, which we're, we're assuming is Will's bike. Yeah. Um, and then it transitioned and goes upside down, and we're in the upside down. And then you see Universal Studios, and it's got, like, black goo vines everywhere, and the sky's red and stuff. I, I, I just thought that was so awesome. Probably, yeah, like you said, by far the best trailer they released this year. Yeah, and it was it was truly custom because they they didn't utilize like clips from a, a house or clips from the show. It was made completely custom. Um, it really set the tone and <laughs> made it hard for me to appreciate the announcements after that. I wasn't too excited because I had I had done a uh, like a leaked lineup video. Yeah, and this was one of the ones on the leaked lineup video, and I even said it on that on on that video that I did. I wasn't excited about this house, but it seems like it's going to come because it's a really popular house. But after I saw that that trailer, I was like, what the hell? They just made me a believer. So I'm excited to see this one. And it's also the one that's getting my girlfriend to actually come to the event. She's nice. not a huge horror fan, but this is bringing her, which is another point. It's bringing a lot of attention to the event that we haven't had before from non-horror fans who are more fans of this uh, particular series. Uh, yeah, my whole thing too is, uh, I just hope they, they do it right, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I have complete trust and faith in Halloween Horror Nights, uh, these are the same people that brought us Walking Dead and American Horror Story in previous years, which, uh, those mazes I loved, um, and I'm hoping they do the same thing with Stranger Things, just, it's a hit, uh, it's a hit or miss with this show, it could be either really good or it can be decent, but I'm hoping that they do a really good job on this. Um, from what I've been hearing and what I've been seeing, it looks pretty good. Um, I've I've only seen very little, and by that it's like sculpts and stuff like that of the Demogorgon and stuff. But I'm very much looking forward to this, um, and I cannot wait to go through it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it, it's going to be up there on my list. But um, that brings us into the the next house that we share, which you already know is my favorite, actually which is Halloween 4. Halloween uh, 4. Yes, sir. So Michael Myers is returning. Um, it, it's it's one that's not going to have Laurie Strode, so that's always interesting because she's part of the iconic uh, storyline that, that we all love. But Halloween 4, he's actually like chasing his niece, not Laurie. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, let's see. It's Michael Myers for one, so you can't go wrong with Michael Myers. So I, I love Michael Myers' uh, He's one of my all-time favorite serial killers. Um, I don't know if you've watched, and it literally just came out today out of this recording, but they finally released the TV spot for uh, Halloween Horror Nights for both events. Um, and in that in that teaser trailer, they show um, the three mazes that, of course, we're obviously sharing, which was Stranger Things, Poltergeist, and Halloween 4. And in the Halloween section, they showed the infamous scene with him hiding behind the white sheets. Now, that kind of begs the question... Is it going to be Halloween 4 all the way, or are we going to have little bits and pieces of Easter eggs from other movies in there? If they're doing, the, of course, that infamous scene in the commercial, that's an infamous Halloween 1 scene, um, and it's reoccurred every now and then in uh, like when Laurie Strode is kind of losing it, and she kind of is hallucinating. I mean, she'll see stuff like that, but I I'm very curious now, are they going to just incorporate every Halloween movie up until 4? As little minor Easter eggs, or is it going to be all of four and then maybe little hints and Easter eggs as you go through the maze? So my understanding from what I've heard, for continuity purposes, they chose four because it's an 80s-themed, uh, uh, what's it called, Halloween movie. The rest of them were in the 70s. Um, but I, un my understanding is that they that's exactly what they're going to be doing. They're going to be integrating a little bit of the of the other ones even the, se the season of the witch so even though michael myers isn't in that one there's going to be like little easter eggs for it and i just want to point out that you said that michael myers is your your favorite uh serial killer which this is the only context where that would be appropriate to be said okay yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah because i you can't just go around in the real world and be like yeah i got a favorite serial killer and yeah, yeah. but yeah. uh yeah, as far as horror movie goes, though, I mean, as in horror movies, uh, Michael Myers has always been one of my favorites, uh, and he's just a legit, may I say, badass, because he just does what he does, 
doesn't let anyone get in his way. And if anybody gets in his way, well, nine out of ten chances is they're dead. So, um, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to seeing this. Uh, I've no, I, I've been watching a lot of uh, construction updates. I haven't been able to get out of the uh, get out to the park myself, but I watch a lot of other YouTubers who do construction updates. And it looks like a lot of the, our facade is going to be the gas station scene from Halloween Four. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see it's a huge facade and I'm really excited to see the finishing product. And yeah, I I mean, it was cool because John Murdy had did uh, say that since Titans of Terror last year, there was no Michael Myers that, uh, he basically teased it saying he's going to come out and play next year. And a lot of people's main, uh, you know, focus for this was, oh, they're going to do Halloween 2018. It's, it's an obvious one because the movie's going to come out. It's a good promotional. Uh, and then people, if they go see it, they can come back and revisit the maze if they want to. Or if they haven't been to the event yet, they can go through the maze. Um, I, I have to say, though, I was a little disappointed it wasn't Halloween 2018. But at the same time, I, I, I'm just glad Michael Myers is back in general. And it also gives me an opportunity to walk through uh, Michael Myers' maze without potentially getting spoiled for the movie. So that's that's pretty good. Um, and But other than that, I'm just really excited that Michael Myers is back. Yeah. Yeah, so am I. I mean, he's my favorite. He – that – plain emotionless emotionless mass like sends chills down my spine so i'm really looking forward to this one it's probably going to go when, when i get to the event not because these are necessarily my favorite but my girlfriend loves stranger things so we're probably going to go to the houses in this particular order so far the order that we've been going stranger things then straight to halloween there you go um, there you go yeah but the next uh shared property that we have is trick or treat and you're actually getting it in two different forms. We're just getting it as a house. We had it as a scare zone last year. Yeah. This one, I think, is going to be a great one on both ends. I feel like they kind of cheaped out by giving you guys a scare zone and a house oh. around the same exact IP. But regardless, uh, it was a great scare zone last year. So if they mimic what we did and bring it to you guys, plus give you the, the maze, I think you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this one? You know what? Uh, as for the maze goes, I am very excited. This is a one of the best uh, horror movies I've seen in a while. Um, the fact that it's it's like three or four different stories that leads up to one giant uh, tie-in at the end. Uh, always, I always thought that was an awesome concept. Um, the same director who did this movie also did the Krampus movie, which was a maze, I think, like two, three years ago. And that maze was a good maze. So I have complete faith that Murdy is just going to be loyal and do the same thing like he did with Krampus with this maze because um, he collaborated a lot with that director and that maze turned out awesome. So I don't I don't doubt that this maze is going to be the same. As far as the scare zone, um, I thought they could have honestly gotten something better. Um, <clears throat> Killer clowns from outer space. Uh, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, I, I think it's still going to be cool. Um, I've heard uh, when we went to Midsummer Scream, they were talking a little bit about it when it uh, supposedly got uh, leaked. And um, he started saying that we're going to see some stuff in the maze that we won't see in the scare zone. For example, when the when the werewolves turn into werewolves, we're going to see them uh, in the process of changing through the scare zone. But when the maze, they're already going to be werewolves in the maze. So that's that's something that's pretty cool because then that means they can put like context and stuff on the uh, actresses who play the werewolves. And you can start slowly seeing them change. And I think yeah. that's pretty cool. That's some cool stuff that uh, I definitely want to see both in the scare zone and in the maze. Uh, so yeah. I'm glad we're seeing both transitions of that. Um, and I'm just excited to see a lot of stuff. Like there's that off the infamous scene with the school bus and the kids um, in the, in the quarry uh, that, that looks pretty cool. Uh, of course the end scene that Sam has with the principal or the, the bus driver when they fight, that's a good scene. Uh, the werewolf scene obviously is a good scene. Like the whole movie in general is just a good good movie so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how much uh this maze is filled with uh, a lot of that stuff yeah now the the scare zone last year i could tell you was great the movie itself it, it's not even that old of a movie but it's already considered like a cult classic yeah so that that tells you a lot about what this movie has done and what it brings to the event um i'm expecting that this is going to be one of the better uh, houses, mazes. Who is it that calls it houses and who is it that calls it mazes? I know that I think you guys call it something and we call it something else. We call it mazes and Mike Aiello said at Midsummer Scream they call it houses. It's just something yeah, they've been doing for years. I, yeah. I, I'm always back and forth with it. But um, yeah, I think Trick or Treat is going to be uh, a staple at the event. One, um, and, and transitioning to the, the next house that we share, is one that I'm not too sure about. 
I am kind of excited just because of a particular scene of the movie. Um, and that scene is the static TV and the little girl talking to like the disembodied voices. That is Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Uh, I was not, I was not uh, like really in the loop and I really haven't been in the loop with a lot of them. A lot of them have caught me off guard, but I didn't know Poltergeist was really, it really had a chance of coming this year. And now that it is coming, I'm a little excited, but I'm on the fence about this one. How about you? So I'm going to be real with you right here. Um, I've never seen the original poster, Poltergeist. and End video. <laughs> yeah, see, that's going to get a lot of hate. And uh, But I, I, I am very excited for this. Uh, it, and it's not something like, oh, this movie sucks, I've never seen it. It's something like I never got around to watching it, which now that it's coming to the event, I get an opportunity to watch it. Um, yeah. However, I can say I've seen the 2013 remake, which I don't know if it's any similar. Um, they might have tweaked some stuff just for remake purposes, but I still want to watch the original, being that Steven Spielberg has some producing uh, credit on it, and I love Steven Spielberg, uh, Toe Popper. Um, and so I, 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 I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, John Murdy had said that this is going to be the most tech-heavy uh, maze that they've ever done at the event so that really gets me excited um, i'm really curious to see I, I i am aware though of what happens in the movie of course it's you know they they move in uh to this new neighborhood and it's and it's built over uh, a, a graveyard and stuff like that and that's what starts a poltergeist and of course you know the infamous scene of they're here she's touching the tv of course I, i'm excited to see the clown how they're going to incorporate that if it's going to be an actual person or a, a puppet i'm hoping it's an actual person that'd be a lot scarier for me but um I, i'm just really excited to see what they're going to incorporate in this maze definitely uh something me and my cousin do every year before horror nights is we watch every property that they do so we get hyped and we can talk about like oh we can we want to see that in the maze or oh that'd be looking cool in the maze you know so uh very much looking forward to both watching this movie and going through this maze yeah, no, that that'll be awesome. You're you're gonna within a short amount of time be able to actually watch the movie and experience it shortly after. Um, but I, I'm kind of the same way with Killer Clowns. I had seen Killer Clowns, but I don't think I ever sat through the whole entire thing up till it was announced at Halloween Horror Nights, and then that's when I actually watched it all the way through. I know that's one of your favorites, so that's, I'm hurting your feelings here. That is like my all time favorite horror movie. And when John <laughs> when John very much teased it like you might begin it next year, I was like, damn it, John, don't do yeah. that. Yeah. And we'll get to the scare zones, which I don't think we share any scare zones. But I think we do, yeah. Um, the last house is one that we both share and don't share. You share title wise, we but we don't share property wise. Exactly, we share the name, uh, but it's going to be completely different in both coasts. We're going to have two different actual intellectual properties represented in both of them, um, and I think last year. We had three intellectual properties represented in it. Did you guys have three as well? We did have three. We had The Purge, we had Happy Death Day, and we had Sinister. And we're talking about the Horrors of Blumhouse. The Horrors uh, of Blumhouse. I'm sorry yeah. we didn't, uh, we didn't yeah. say that yet. Horrors of Blumhouse <laughs> Chapter 2. Yeah, so uh, we're getting uh, Happy Death Day and... The First Who Purge. And The First Purge, yeah. yes. Um, uh, yeah. I, both movies that I enjoyed. I did a video about this announcement, just this particular announcement, and I said it. Both movies that I enjoyed, but I wasn't looking forward to them coming to the event. Um, but I do like the idea of the horrors of Blumhouse returning again, and the fact that every single time, because it's based on a movie studio, not based on a particular intellectual property, it's like different, you know, like, you have Halloween that comes every so often, and you know what Halloween is, but when the horrors of Blumhouse is announced, up till we find out what the actual like internal properties are going to be, it's up in the air because this this studio has several movies. Yeah. Uh, there's so many options. So this is a, a property that could continue to return uh, without actually being like repetitive. It could be completely fresh, completely new. And that, that's actually something that was pointed out by uh, Thomas from the, the League when I was watching his video with uh, his new member. Yeah. <laughs> like his like uh, – his alter ego. Yeah, that was and great. That was hilarious. But he pointed that out, and I was like, eh, you know what? That's, that's a good point. Still doesn't excite me. These two properties that they're bringing don't excite me. I think Blumhouse has better properties that they could have represented. But regardless, that is a good point. Next year or when they choose to bring it back, it's always going to be a fresh property. It's not going to be repetition. Um, so 
that that's my thought on it. How about yours? So I have to say, uh, you guys are getting Happy Death Day, uh, and we got that last year. And Happy Death Day, I'm not gonna lie, uh, is one one really good movie um, that I enjoyed from Blumhouse. And the thing about we had we had Happy Death Day last year, and the thing about that was we had it. And I went through it before the movie even came out. So I was very much confused. Like, the only thing I was going in was knowledge of the trailer. So now that the movie's out, you guys have a better understanding of, okay, this is going to be, we, we know what the premise of this movie is. And, you know, you're going to walk through it knowing what's going to happen. And you're going to have more knowledge of it than I did uh, until I saw yeah. the movie after. So um, that's a plus. For me, we're getting Truth or Dare and Unfriended. Now, I've never seen both of those movies. Um, Unfriended was uh i've you know i've seen ending explains for unfriended and it's the same thing with truth or dare so i know the i know what goes on in the movie and stuff like that um but i i just think it's going to be an interesting maze for us and on top of that our ending is going to be an original ending so if you're if you guys aren't familiar in the blumhouse uh opening intro for the every movie they come out with they're opening like you know that says Blumhouse Productions. You see a little girl, and you see it in a haunted house with a spinning chair and everything. We're, well, that's going to be our original ending. So they're going to have that little girl, and they're going to tell a tale of why she looks so sad. Is she really evil? You're going to go into this haunted house, and you're going to see maybe she is more sinister than you actually think. So that honestly, right there, kind of saved the whole maze for me because um, I'm very much always up for anything original. Anything original is always awesome for me. So. That's going to be cool. Truth or Dare, now, however, I am very, very much looking forward to seeing how they do that. Because if you guys are not aware, with Truth or Dare, they have this one scene where when they get possessed by the demon, they have, they do these infamous, like, sinister smiles. Their eyes get all weird and stuff. <laughs> so I, I'm very curious to see how the mask is going to look for that um, or, you know, what's going to happen for that. That's going to be an, an interesting thing. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Unfriended, Unfriended takes place in an entire uh, Skype chat room. Yeah. Um, so that's another property that's going to be very interesting to uh, see. So John Murdy very much explained it like it's it's supposed to be a demon, and you don't see the demon throughout the whole movie, but in the maze we're going to see the demon. So that's going to be very cool to see what the demon's going to look like um, and stuff like that. Um, again, these are two movies I have to check out just for uh, Horror Nights purposes, just so I get what I'm – an understanding of what I'm going to be walking through, uh, stuff to see like that. So, very much looking forward to uh, Horrors of Blumhouse Chapter Two. Uh, I've always liked the, the the concept of it. Last year, we, the concept was, um, you know, the purge is going on outside, so come inside this theater, and they're going to have a Blumhouse marathon. And it was uh, Happy Death Day and Sinister, uh, and that was cool. And then um, this year, it's like you come to the Horrors of Blumhouse, and you get like. It's like they're teleporting you into these movies. So are you going to make it out alive or, you know? And so I, I've always liked how they always have little stories behind the properties and stuff. So that's really yeah. cool. And it's two movies that I've watched both of them. You you haven't. They're, they're decent movies, but I, I honestly was surprised at how well they did. Obviously, they both did well enough that I think they're considering sequels for both. And I think one already has a sequel coming out. The Unfriended already has a sequel. Yeah, it's like I think it's going on. It's like third movie. I know Dark Web already came out. Yeah, so they 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 did a lot better than I expected, which is why they're coming. Um, so that'll be interesting. It, it's definitely not a property that I'm jealous that you guys got and we didn't. Um, but that brings us to the point of where we're going to talk about properties that we do not share. So. Yeah, non-shared, you got five, I got three. Um, I'm actually just looking at it right now because we have an all-day attraction that stays around year-round, but they count it towards the event as well. Um, and, I'll, and I'll go ahead and just, you know, I'll, I'll start with uh, I'll start with one because I want to save the best one for last, which they, it was, they, they shared a lot of stuff yesterday at, at Scare LA, but I want to save the best one for last, which is Universal's Monsters. So I'm going to start off with the Walking Dead uh, all-day attraction. We have that year round um, at the uh, park, but they always include it in the event. And the the thing they say every year, and I never see a difference, is they add more zombies than they do throughout the year. Um, and if you're fans of the show, it's really cool to go through. Um, I, I know early on when this was being built for uh, for a while, John Murray said this wasn't going to be the same thing. They're going to constantly keep changing it. But since it's been open, I haven't seen no changes or no new scenes added to it. 
Um, and so, you know, it's something that I walk through because it's another maze just to walk through and it's air conditioned. So, yeah. So you guys still get the walking dead every single year. <laughs> it's a, it's a full year round attraction. So yeah. it used to be where the house of horrors was. I'm so sad that they took that out, but now we got walking dead, the full day attraction. Okay. Um, so one of our first non-shared attractions from the Orlando side is Slaughterhouse Cinema, uh, which is truly one of the originals that I'm looking forward to. And I think for the most part, the, the ones that we don't share are just original houses, at least from my end. I don't know if you got any IPs that, that we won't be sharing, uh, but for us, it's, it's just original houses. Sla Slaughterhouse Cinema is just going to be like these like cheesy B-grade movies that we're going to be going through, like old school, 80s uh, cinema style that is going to be like horrific. Uh, this is one of the ones that I have on like towards the top of my list. I'm really looking forward to this one. It just seems like an original idea that could really, a lot could be done with it. Yeah, that sounds it sounds awesome. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why I've always wanted to go to Orlando's event too, because they always have original houses every year, and I love the fact of original houses. Original houses for me are awesome because it gives you the creativity to do whatever, pretty much whatever you want, and so that's really cool. Um, one of the things that we have original over here is the Terra Tram, because we do a studio tour over here. And so they, they turn that studio tour into something we call the Terror Tram. So you get to walk on the sets of, uh, you know, um, the How the Grinch Stole Christmas to, through the Bates Motel to the Bates House and then in the infamous uh, plane crash scene from War of the Worlds, and it yeah. ends there. Um, that's just something to do every year that's always fun for me, especially in, in a filmmaker's point of view that I want to be a filmmaker and walking through those sets, those iconic sets, especially the Bates Motel. Like, that's history you're walking on right there, you know? Like, they filmed Psycho on this thing, and I'm walking on this set. But uh, it's going to be called Hollywood Harry's Dread Time Stories. So we got confirmation that an uh, infamous character that we had uh, come and I, to the event, I think, like two or three years ago, Hollywood Harry, uh, who we thought for a while was going to be our start of icons. Uh, but he is making a return, and it's going to be an original thing. Um, I'm very excited for Hollywood Harry to come back. Hollywood Harry, the first time around, uh, you can look it up on YouTube. Crypt TV put out a video of Hollywood Harry roaming the lot and stuff like that. And it was a whole kind of social media thing where, like, he was just walking around Universal Studios. He used to be part of Universal Studios as a mascot back in the day. But then uh, when clowns became the stuff of fears, uh, you know, he kind of just went off the grid. And then he comes back to Universal Studios and takes it over with his Carney family who are all sadistic and stuff like them, killing people and stuff like that. So the whole backstory of Hollywood Harry was just phenomenal when it first came around. And I'm very excited to see what's going to happen uh, for his sequel, for his return to the the, the event. What, what are we going to see this time around? What kind of stories are going to be coming? What is he going to bring for us? They have not released a video for the Terror Tram yet, which I'm very much waiting for. Um, it was kind of leaked at the last minute, so they—they, they, I remember John Murdy said like one tweet about it, and then really never talked about it again. So I'm very much curious to see what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I've read a little bit of his story, and it's—it's it's a unique character. It's—it's kind of like having a, a host. So I, I like—I like the idea that they're—they're they're using this year for the Terror Tram. Um, that takes me to. The next property that Orlando has that we will not be sharing, which is Dead Exposure, which is actually a property that had been done before um, at Halloween Horror Nights. So popular so that it's being brought back this year. Um, and basically, this is the prequel to the original Dead Exposure house. This is Dead Exposure Patient Zero. So it's going to go back to basically, I think it's France um, and how it all started. Um, I, I don't know if you've actually like looked through what what it was like originally i saw a couple of clips of what it was like originally so dead exposure they're going off of the idea of basically camera exposure so sorry about that someone texting but basically you're going through a completely dark house you're technically like blind and every single time that you see like the flash of a camera you're, you're exposed to what's around you. You don't even know what's around you. My God, I hate when people text me when I'm doing videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to like ignore it, but it's like breaking my <laughs> my character. But uh, the idea is awesome. The fact that you're going to be in complete darkness and the only time that you're exposed to the evil around you is when there's a camera flash 
is amazing. And then also the idea that it's a it's a prequel to a previous previous maze, and we're gonna find out you know how we came to be in this zombie apocalyptic world. I I'm looking forward to this one a lot. It sounds awesome. Uh, if it's a prequel too, I mean that's cool that they're bringing back an original maze and they're giving you how it all began. Um, and that also sets up a whole storyline for the future if they ever want to bring it back again for sequels. Um, it's much like a Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead kind of thing, where Walking Dead was, of course, we already got this show and a zombie apocalypse started, and then Fear the Walking Dead shows you how it all began. So um, I, I really I really think that's a cool concept, and if it's supposed to be around 80s theme too, that's going to be really cool because you can hear a lot of like – I don't know if they'll incorporate a lot of like cheesy '80s like looks and music and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Um, so that would be really cool. Yeah, sounds, sounds awesome though. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one a lot. What 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 else do you have that we don't share? I know that you have a little bit less than we do. So this is gonna be the last um, for me at least uh, non shared property, and this is the one. This is the maze that I'm looking forward to the most. After hearing a lot about it yesterday at Scare LA. Um, I cannot wait. This is Universal Classic Monsters Music by Slash. Um, so, I don't know, man. Uh, it's In a way, it's an IP, but in a way, it's an original maze, uh, the way Murdy put it. Uh, and the reason why I say IP, because it's all the Universal Classic Monsters, but it's an original maze because it's not really any specific you know, movie. They're just taking some of the best scenes from each movie and putting them in the maze. Yeah. Um, so the concept for this maze, from what I heard yesterday, is you're going to walk through uh, – they got a lot of uh, inspiration from a, a graveyard out in London and stuff like that. So I guess the concept is you're going to walk through this graveyard. It's going to be all like dead dead grass everywhere and stuff like that. You're going to walk through, and what's essentially going to happen is as you're walking through this graveyard, you're not supposed to be there. You're supposed to be – you're like trespassing, and you're going to be awaking the universal monsters from their – you know sleep from being dead for all these years um and essentially there's this one character in frankenstein her name's emily now it's a very infamous scene in the movie because he's in in the movie frankenstein he's trying to throughout the whole movie he just wants to be loved he wants a friend and he finds this little girl named emily now emily was kind of like being her his friend and stuff like that and um, there's this one scene where they're throwing flowers into the into the water, and they run out of flowers. And then Frankenstein, because he, you know he's got the mind of like a two year old, he picks up this girl and throws her in the water, and essentially ends up killing her. She drowns to death. So they're gonna take that concept, and it's gonna be like, where has she been all these years? Well, she's gonna be rotten and decayed, and she's gonna be coming out and scaring you and stuff like that. And then uh, you're gonna see like. Um, like the Wolfman and everything and stuff. Then you're going to walk in Dr. Frankenstein's castle. It's already going to be on fire and everything. It's supposed to be like after the events of Frankenstein and they're working on the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, so this should be pretty cool. You know, you're going to see scenes from Phantom of the Opera. You're going to see scenes from The Mummy. You're going to see scenes from The Wolfman, uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. It, it's going to be – it's going to be it, – just the maze itself is awesome. And then when you walk out of the maze, when you're done with the maze, there's the Scare Zone Monster Masquerade, which we'll get to in a bit. Which actually ties into the maze. So, we got an also uh, we got a lot of sculpts uh, that we got to see yesterday of all the monsters. We got a lot of uh, concept art of what a lot of the rooms are going to look like. We also got to hear a lot of the music that Slash and um, their music producer produced for the maze, which we were like the first ones to ever hear it. So that alone was just an awesome experience. If you guys uh, go watch my HHN uh, Scare LA panel, you'll hear a lot of that music in the panel towards the end when they bring Slash out. Um, Slash was just an awesome surprise, though, and I'm very much looking forward to this because, for one, this is the comeback of a music maze, which I've been wanting for, for a while since Black Sabbath, and the fact that they're doing a music maze combined with the badass Universal Monsters, I am so looking forward to this. Like, the sculpts look scary and everything, so it looks awesome. Yeah. No, and, uh, yeah, the, the the idea for this one is awesome. Uh, back to Frankenstein, yeah, his story is actually, like, a beautiful story. It was it was all, like, a misunderstanding. He just wanted, like, love. Yeah. So it, it, that's interesting. I, I know that Murdy said that the toughest part about this is making these monsters scary again, so oh, they're... And let me tell you, dude, the sculpts for this, man, they just look 
it's scary. Dracula looks like really scary. The Wolfman looks awesome. They made Frankenstein uh, like a decayed zombies, and he looks like Burns, so he looks even scary. The Phantom of the Opera, like he he's got acid poured on him. If you guys are not familiar with the Phantom of the Opera, yeah. he got acid poured on his face. They're really going with that, and they're gonna make it like even more sadistic than the original. And I, I'm really looking for the Hunchback looks dope. Uh, I'm most interested in seeing your Invisible Man and how they're going to pull that off. So they showed a, a concept art in that, and it looked really cool. So in in our Halloween two maze, uh, when they did it, they had the they had this one room which was an original ending where you saw a bunch of pumpkins, uh, pumpkin heads floating around, and you, there were some people that were in them. It was an all black room, and the only thing you could see were the pumpkin heads, and they were glowed up like uh, blue, green, you know, different colors and stuff. So it looked like they were just floating heads, and it was a really cool illusion. Now, they did show how they're going to kind of try to pull that off in the uh, Invisible Man. He kind of looks like, I'm not going to lie, uh, when, I saw the, when I saw what he was wearing, he looked like a Hugh Hefner. Uh, he was wearing like a robe and like the pajama <laughs> pants, and he's got, of course, the, uh, the bandages on for covering his face. But you're going to see uh, some of the bandages are off, so he's going to look invisible and stuff. They're going to try to pull that illusion off again this year. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they do that. Yeah, that, that's the one that I'm interested in seeing. I, I'm always like, when, when they when they are forced to use extreme like movie special effects, like in, like in that case, in order to make him look invisible in a house, yeah, when physically there, um, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, with my well, one final point. Um, so it's been rumored that. Murdy's been holding off on this because this one's like near and dear to his heart. But when he finally did it, it'd be his swan song. I've heard that too. I've heard that too. And I've had, I've not heard anything about him retiring yet. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that this is his last year and he's not come out and said anything about it yet. Um, he's not confirmed it really yet. Uh, from what he sounds like, he, he, he maybe, maybe has one or two more years left in him. Um, he is in Ireland full time now, so it is a little bit harder for him to come out here as often. Um, and when he does come out here, it's usually for events like Scare LA, Midsummer Scream, and he'll come out for like two or three weeks to stay in Hollywood to see what's going on with the, uh, you know, what the progress of uh, Halloween Horror Nights. So um, I'm curious. Uh, a lot of people said that this was his last year, uh, and and because of Universal Monsters, that if he was going to go, this was going to be his last bang. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it yet, and I and I won't say anything because you know it's up to the man himself if he wants to retire. I don't. I, I'll respect his decision. I just hope they bring on someone just as creative, if not even more creative. You know, maybe Mike yeah. Aiello can come over. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was with you up till you said that. Uh, so it's tough when you lose your your like creative master like that. So uh, I I'd, I'd feel for you guys. I'd respect the man for doing what he has to do. He's been extremely integral in the in the whole Halloween Horror Nights from the get go, and he's extremely active with his with his twitters, his two twitters that he talks in between. Yeah, uh, but you can't have Mike Aiello, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'll kind of squeeze the last ones that Orlando has um, as far as the properties because they're they're not properties that are really like blowing me out of my mind, but um, the we have three left that. You guys only have seven, apparently eight, kind of. Yeah. Uh, the the only one out of this, or actually two of them. I'm, I'm lying. Two of them. Carnival Carnage sounds legit. The the fact that we're gonna be at kind of like a, you know, it, it's a theme park, and we're gonna be able to see a decaying theme park and walk through that, and they're they're using all like the rusted uh, rides and pieces of the the rides all rusted to like kill you. Sweet. That that sounds really cool. Um, also we have Seeds of Extinction, which that one, I'm, I'm just like, I'm leaving it up in the air. It sounds cool, but the more and more I let that, that idea settle after watching the, the actual like trailer for it, plants that are going to kill us a little weird, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> poison Ivy, uh, man. Right. I, I've had Poison Ivy before. Have you? Uh, I was thinking about the, uh, Batman villain. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I, I've had actual real poison ivy on my on my arm, and that was terrible. Oh, that must have sucked. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it lasted forever. But so I guess that is terrifying, right? Seeds yeah. of extinction. 
There we go. Um, but last but not least, our final announcement was Scary Tales, which is another another property that we've had at Halloween Horror Nights before. And basically, um, as I was telling you earlier, what Scary Tales is is they use um, fairy tale stories that you know you and I had when we were kids. And basically, as we've grown up, those stories have grown up as well and become more sinister. Um, so this year, uh, I believe it's the the wolf and the two little pig or the three little pigs um oz which is one that i i think is going to be extremely interesting because there there's already like some stories about like you know what happened on set while filming one of the one of the like the little the munchkins the, committed, the munchkins, suicide. Like, committed suicide on the set yeah whether or not that actually happened is like in between and then humpty dumpty which um they they've done this in the past with other fairy tales Humpty Dumpty sounds interesting. Like, I don't know how they're going to make that terrifying, but I'm actually looking forward to this house. It was the last announcement that we had. I actually wished that we would have gotten your announcement, which was the the one that you were just talking about. Universal the, uh, Monsters. Universal Monsters. That one sounds awesome. Yeah. I actually would have got that instead. But this sounds pretty cool. Uh, at first, I thought it was going to be a property that was just going to be uh, The Wizard of Oz. Um, style, but then to find out that it's scary tales and it's it's something that we've had in the past that has been extremely successful and to bring it back is pretty cool. Um, but that rounds up our mazes. actual properties yeah. at mazes and houses that are shared and not shared for east and west. Um, but moving on to the next uh, basically announcements that we've had was the scare zones. Scare zones, yep. So you want to start off with your scare zones? So yeah, we'll do. We'll, we'll start off. How many scare zones do you have total? Uh, total scare zones five. Five. So we both got five and five. So we'll go back and forth. Um, I'll start off with the very first one that got announced uh, at Monster Palooza earlier in the year, which is Holidays in Hell, um, and that's going to be taking place in the metro area where we have three mazes back there, and it's a it's the it's one of the opening things you go through to get to the mazes. So this this one sounds awesome. This is going to take every holiday they have and make them sinister in a way. You know, you got Cupid, uh, leprechauns, and evil Easter bunnies. Of course, you're going to have Krampus. Every holiday is going to be incorporated in this maze, and I'm very very excited to see how they. Uh, make the monsters look. We got a couple of uh, of sculpts for uh, at Midsummer Scream. They showed of of course the leprechaun and um, of course a little bit look of the Easter Bunny and uh, some. And on Twitter he released some of Krampus with his long horns and it looks uh, amazing. So it's gonna go of course by by uh, in order from January all the way to December. So that's gonna be really cool. Um, and I'm very much looking for holidays for hell. That it should be an awesome uh, scare zone. Yeah, no, no, it's it sounds like a cool one. It's kind of like the the scary tales, you know. They're they're twisting uh, childhood stories that we've had into an evil, sinister style. Yeah, yeah. So on our end, um, the the first ones that were announced were were three, but I'll start off with Vamp eighty five, which it which seems to me like it's going to be the coolest one. Apparently, there's going to be like uh, every thirty minutes, there's going to be like a like a midnight countdown type of like special event that they're going to be doing at, at this it's going to be like new year's um in the in 1985 with a bunch of like vampires nice um, yeah so the the ball is dropping at the time that that this is all taking place so that actual scare zone i, I believe it's going to be the largest scare zone as well that we're going to have at um at universal studios orlando and every 30 minutes, they're going to have like a special event that's going to be going on with the ball dropping. And I guess the scare actors are going to be doing something that ends up being a little bit more scary. Maybe like some type of like, I don't know, sacrifice of like a regular perk by vampires jumping all over him. Sounds um, awesome. Sounds awesome. Yeah, it, it's, it sounds like a, like a really cool one. Um, the, the scare zones in general this year um, didn't really get me too much. But this is one that's sticking out for me. Um, yeah, that sounds it sounds awesome, especially vampires. I've always liked the concept of vampires and stuff like that, so that's cool. The next one we we have over here in Hollywood is one we've had not the third year in a row, but the third year coming back to the event. 
and it's one uh, transition where you walk from the lower lot all the way to the to the back lot to get to the metro sets. Uh, and then you have to go through this long tunnel, and they call this scare zone Toxic Tunnel. And the basic premise of this tunnel is um, these like construction workers were working on this like uh, sewer project, and some toxins got loose, and they got uh, affected by it. So they're like masks and stuff are like 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 stuck on their faces and stuff like that. They're all rotting and stuff like that, corpses and stuff like that. Um, and so yeah, it's all it's all radioactive kind of thing, and. When you walk through this tunnel, there's like there's like light strobing off and everything, and then you know they they come at you and scare you. Um, I wish they would do something a little bit better uh, for the tunnel purposes, or you know not just really do a tunnel one at all. But either way, it's a scare zone, so I'll you know I'll take it. Yeah, and uh, the next two that I'm just gonna put these into one, just because neither one of them really like blows me out of my mind, and one of them is just basically reutilizing the trick or treat. Um, area with like the pumpkins and everything and the the facade that the trick-or-treat scare zone had last year so I have an idea it's gonna look really nice but it's gonna be strangely reminiscent of what we saw last year so it's not gonna be as great as we think uh, rotting pumpkins and you know a very like Halloweeny type of like theme uh, that's the the uh, the harvest um, and then twisted traditions twisted traditions from my understanding it's gonna have a little bit of each house um, so some of the monsters that we're going to be experiencing in, in the houses are going to be there for us to see and ter basically terrorizing us on the street. Two, two of the scare zones that, you know, they're, they're original concepts, so those tend to either be surprising or not the best. Uh, but like I said, the scare zones aren't what's getting me this year. It's the mazes. But, yeah, I put these two together. The last two will be IP ones, but we'll get to one, to those after you. Go ahead. Um, you have a harvest. We, we're also doing something called Hell's Harvest. And uh, so you're going to be uh, – the description says you're entering a pagan harvest festival where the dark spirit of Halloween was born. The streets are filled with uh, strange bewitched dolls brought to life through dark magic. The, the army of dolls are uh, are looking for the next victim for their human sacrifice. Will it be you? So – it looks like they're messing with some dark magic, and they're going to be a lot of dolls walking around and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to Hell's Harvest. That should be pretty interesting, especially if they're going to make these dolls look really cool. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. The last time I've seen anything Dolls Incorporated was actually at Not Scary Farm, which is another event we have out here uh, on the West Coast. And they, they did a whole maze dedicated to dolls, and it was pretty freaky. So I'm very interested. I'm very fascinated and very interested to see how this one's going to turn out. Especially because it's Horror Nights. They do all out stuff. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, the next one that we have is one that I think is going to be pretty cool. The concept sounds interesting. Um, it, it's a an IP concept. So it's something that a lot of people are going to be, be able to relate to. And it's the Fear of Dolls. And that's the Revenge of Chucky. Um... They're going to be having a bunch of like dolls all over the place that are coming to life. Uh, Chucky is doing something to bring them all to life to terrorize our lives. I think this, yeah, Chucky is Chucky. Yeah, uh, and he's kind of a staple at the event. He's been around for a while. I know you guys used to have like Chucky's Insult Emporium or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think this is going to be one of those where I'm not too excited, but I'll enjoy it just as well. Should be good. Chucky's always fun to play around, especially if they get uh, small actors and actresses to get in the costumes and stuff. That's always the scariest even more. So, um, The yeah. next one we're going to have that you guys had last year, of course, was Trick or Treat. Um, and like I said, I am very much looking forward uh, to seeing what they do as far as the werewolves. We're going to see them in the transformation phase. Uh, like, and like I said, in the maze, they're already going to be werewolves. So that's going to be cool. And we're going to see a lot of the, uh, of course, the zombie school children walking around, some of the vampires uh, from the movie. And, of course, uh, Sam is going to be walking around, which will be really cool. You can't go wrong with Sam. Sam uh, it was going to be cool. So I, I, one thing I am curious of is if we're going to see both mask and unmask Sam. Um, I know that's going to be probably one thing we're going to see in the maze, but I want to know if we're going to see it both uh, in the maze and in the scare zone. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah, I can't say that I remember seeing him unmasked in the in the scare zone, but I believe they've promised that we will see him unmasked in the maze for so, house. Yeah, he, 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 him being unmasked is it's a scary sight. So, 
Yeah. And last but not least for our scare zones here in Orlando is your favorite. I saved it on purpose. Yeah. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, oh, which I had I don't remember watching the movie all the way through before. I have seen parts of it in the past growing up, but I watched it fully through as soon as this was announced, and it's it's uh, it looks like a horribly good movie. I can uh, uh, I can tell you every part of that movie honestly. Yeah. I, I love that movie so much that I'm already seeing stuff on Twitter in Orlando of people taking pictures of some set pieces and. I'm like that's the that's the spaceship. Holy crap! And I'm just getting excited. Um, yeah, I, I'm so jealous. That's my all time favorite. Seeing some sculpts at Midsummer Scream, it just I am. I hope you get some good footage of that because that is the the scare zone I want to see the most. So uh, a cool thing I was watching um, uh, Tim Tracker actually, and he was doing a, a little review of like the the construction for Halloween Horror Nights. And Universal Studios now has like a new nighttime like light show, water show, where they, they actually use like water and project images onto the water of like dinosaurs and Harry Potter and all these like crazy things. That's not going to be running through Halloween Horror Nights, but they're using some of the projectors and projector technology for the Killer Clown Scare Zone because it's right there. So it, that the Killer Clown Scare Zone is right around where uh, the Transformers ride is, and that's right in front of the water, which is where those projectors are. They're going to be using the projection technology uh, against the building, and I believe he said like uh, every 30 minutes or, or once an hour, the actual like uh, ship tent is going to be taken off. Oh, with- my God. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so, that's so awesome. Yeah, when I heard that, I was like, oh, shoot. If they're going to be using that type of technology, I'm really looking forward oh. to it. And it's going to be projected up against the building to make the buildings look like their their ship tent. I've I've literally and I and I so and I, I tweeted at Mike Aiello, too. And I'm like, I'm so jealous that you guys have killer clowns. And he liked that tweet. And it was funny. And. I don't, there's a lot of things that I would love to see in that scare zone, and if Murdy if Murdy sticks to his word, we're supposed to be getting it next year for a maze. So I, if if we're gonna get a maze and a scare zone, I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, that's one property I can deal with both as a maze and a scare zone. Uh, and I and I hope Murdy is not just saying that just to just to play with our our heads, because I really I've been dying for a Killer Clowns Outer Space maze. I thought this year would have been perfect because it's the 30th anniversary, but I'm hoping. Since the actual creators of Killer Clowns from Outer Space said that they got some stuff for a sequel planned in the works in the next coming years, and they said really next year is going to be like where they're going to start announcing stuff, it'd be so perfect to bring it to the event. Um, another thing I'm really I'm hoping they do for you guys in the Scare Zone is if you guys know that movie has an iconic score to it, as far as like the electric guitar and stuff, and the iconic theme song for it, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, made as famous made by the the Dickies, um, and I'm hoping they play that throughout the scare zone for you guys um i'm just excited to see what clowns are going to incorporate though because there's so much they can use they can do original ones um i want to see like the little ray guns and stuff like that it those growing up as a kid watching that movie that movie used to scare the crap out of me and now i watch it it's such it's such a funny cheesy horror movie and the clowns to this to this day 30 years later still live up to their reputation of being scary so Props to you guys. I, I hope it's it's a phenomenal scare zone, and I, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, and the clowns are huge, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they they like make them, how the masks are going to look, and are they going to look as huge as they look in the movie? I, you know what? Seeing the sculpts of the mask, it looks like they're going to be about the same, the same, uh, you know, as 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 big as they are in, in the movies. So that should be cool. And they're known for, of course, those big clown shoes and those big and that big, uh, the big costumes they wear. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this is going to be put together. I, and I hope it comes to Hollywood next year. Crossing my fingers. It's already a prediction I'm making for next year. So, <laughs> um, well, if not, you could watch and cry. My cry. big thought. Yeah, but like, I, oh, I could have, I could have <laughs> went this year, and no. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, th- that's gonna leave it out to me, which is gonna be the one, the 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 scare zone I'm looking forward to the most after hearing a lot about it yesterday, which is Monster Masquerade. So you're gonna see the likes uh, in this one, uh, Phantom of the Opera and the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and uh, it's gonna be cool. Uh, the score for this this maze and this scare zone, I have to tell you. I think there's like 20 tracks they did or 22 tracks that they did just for this alone. And 
it's awesome. He said that you're going to hear a song through every every part of the maze you go through. Every transition is going to have its own kind of song. Uh, even when you walk out, there's going to be like – they made this like dubstep song that Slash actually incorporated some guitar in. And it's really cool because the ending for this maze sounds awesome. It's like you're going to walk out and you're going to see the Bride of Frankenstein. And then Frankenstein's going to hit the switch and everything's just going to explode. And you're supposed to be dead after that. And that's when they're going to play the dubstep song. And then you're going to walk out and go into the Monster Masquerade Scare Zone, which kind of is, is almost in a way a continuation of the maze. So this maze and this scare zone are looking to be probably the most hype thing at the event uh especially music done by slash he's done music for us before in a maze called clowns 3d which was a, a fantastic maze and yeah i'm very much looking forward to seeing how this is going to be awesome this, you know how awesome this is going to look how they're going to make everything and also we got confirmation that not only is it going to be a phantom of the opera and hunchback of notre dame but it's going to be uh all the monsters are going to be incorporated in monster masquerade and they're going to be in their decayed forms, but they're going to be wearing, like, funny little masks of, of them. So Frankenstein's going to wear, like, a funny little Frankenstein mask uh, of a masquerade. You know, the Wolfman, the same thing. So that should be pretty cool to see. I'm very much looking forward to it. Nice. Um, so that brings us to the – basically, let's, let's first just wrap up exactly everything. The The event is completely announced, guys. We We've gone over everything, uh, given you our insights as far as, you know, what we think – of the mazes as far and scare zones coming this year on both east and west coast um next i want to transition us into our top five that we're looking forward to as far as properties this year um you want me to go ahead and go first then uh yeah, go ahead give me your list so i'm gonna go from uh five being uh the worst but it's not really the worst just that's how i'm leveling it to one being the best i'm gonna start off with number five it's gonna be um probably it's really hard honestly but out of out of the nine of the five that i'm looking forward to so number five i'm gonna say is gonna be poltergeist uh number four will be stranger things three trick-or-treat two halloween four and then the number one maze i'm looking forward to the most is universal monsters nice so for me, I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'll go backwards from five to one. So for me, it's going to be Poltergeist, five, Dead Exposure, four, um, uh, Stranger Things, three, then Slaughterhouse, two, and Halloween, four, of course, numero uno. There you go. So that was the complete list, the complete scare zones, mazes, non-properties, uh, you know, I, IPs, everything, uh, you know. So that's the complete lineup for both Orlando and Hollywood, another West versus East Coast uh, edition of the Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, what's going to be our next topic? What should we talk about next? Uh, we got a lot of, We got a lot of stuff we can talk about. Um, yeah. Uh, why don't we try to see if we could get some people to comment down below? Let us know what they would like us to talk about next. You know, the event's getting closer to – uh, being to fru fruition, so hopefully we could get another video in before then from East and West, but maybe our next video is something incorporating the event already happened and us already experiencing it. Yeah, so you heard Eddie here. Leave a comment down below to see what you guys want to see next in the West versus East Coast. If you want to know a little bit more about the East Coast, we'll let Eddie Tamit talk and I'll comment in. If you want to know about the West Coast out in the East Coast, I can talk and Eddie can comment in. Or if you want to just have another uh battle between us it would be fun because we, we we have we have fun making this this is a, a series that just me and him do uh we had this idea and not not i don't think anyone does it i think we're like the first people to do it so that's that's something cool that we incorporated so all right guys thanks for watching this video it's been awesome we we talked about the events and i'm very much looking uh very much looking forward to both events to see how they do um make sure to hit that like button the subscribe button hit that bell notification and we will see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to ask yourself, have you been entertained? <laughs>